Let's freak out about the books I've read so far this year. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Laura. I love reading books and today I'll be doing the mid-year freak out tag. If you have been following my channel, you know it hasn't been the best reading year so far. During June, I've been trying to read another type of books and I actually been enjoying a lot of them. You're going to see some of them in this video. I do have some books I enjoyed before that. that I also want to talk about some of them I haven't even talked about yet in this channel and I think you really should know them. So without further introduction, let's start with the first question. The best book you read so far in 2024. I've actually haven't given any five stars. It's so horrible. I hate it so much. I hate that I've read over 40 books this year and I still haven't gotten one five star pick. However, I do have three picks that I gave 4.5 stars to. The three of them, historical romances, heterosexual romances, which is so out of my character. I'm usually extremely picky with historical romances, so I was really surprised about this. I don't know why. Those are the ones that made me laugh the most, they made me cry the most, and they all happen to be historical romances. These three picks are And Then He Kissed Her, Lakeshire Park, and A Wicked Kind of Husband. The first first one is a romance between a secretary and a biscon. Emma actually wants to write an etiquette book. So she writes an etiquette book and she shows it to Harry and Harry is like, there's no public for this, this is not good enough. She writes another manuscript and another manuscript and every single time he rejects her manuscripts. At the beginning of the book she discovers that he actually haven't read any of the manuscripts. She's so angry that she's like, you know what, I'm quitting. So she goes and works for the enemy's newspaper where they actually let her write a column about etiquette and that column goes extremely viral. Harry had been actually trying to buy the enemy's newspaper for a lot of time and thanks to Emma he had to spend a lot of money to buy that newspaper because everyone was reading it now. So they are going back to the same place. Harry is again Emma's boss but this time she has the upper hand because she is now a writer. They're going to spend a lot of time to get there and slowly they are realizing that they can actually get along pretty well. Well, they are going to be in love, of course. And then the second book is a clean romance. It doesn't have any kind of a smut on it. In this case, you're following two sisters, Emily and Clara. They are in a really difficult situation because his stepfather, who really doesn't care about them, is about to die. And when he does, they are going to be alone in the world and they are actually be homeless because the person who is going to inherit the house is not going to take care of them. They only have these like two weeks left to find a husband. Clara is actually in love with this guy who's making a party in these two weeks they have left. So the point is making this person fall in love with Clara Bag and marry her. The problem is that there is another girl interested in this guy. His older brother is the love interest whose name is Peter. So you're following a hero and heroine Peter and Amelia who are trying to help their little sister touch the husband they want. So there is going to be a competition, there is going to be a lot of fun times, it was hilarious. The thing about this book is it's also really hard to read the time because you're following Amelia who thinks it's her duty to make sure that her sister is safe and her sister is loved and she's running out of time to make that happen. She figures out that maybe if her sister is not going to be able to catch this husband she's in love with maybe it's Amelia's duty to find a husband to take care of them. She realizes that she's not going to find a love marriage. She will probably have to settle with someone who is as desperate as they are. I wasn't only seeing Amelia and Clara, I was seeing all the women who went through the same. And women who are probably going through the same right now in the 21st century. And it just completely broke my heart. I was seeing Amelia, I was seeing her falling in love with Peter and knowing that she didn't have time for romance and she didn't have time for happiness. It was the perfect amount of realism without forgetting that we are in a romance bag. The last one is a weird kind of husband. This bag, I was not expecting to love it. I picked up this book when I really didn't want to read a historical romance but I kept reading it because this book was so good that he didn't care that I was not in the mood to read it. He just grabbed me and made me read the entire thing in one sitting, made me cry the hardest I've ever cried I think with a book. I suffered this book from beginning to end and I laughed from beginning to end. It was such a hilarious book. It has the perfect humor for me. If you're following a married couple who hasn't actually seen each other for like 
two years, three years. Well, since they married, they saw each other the day they married and then they never saw each other again. They're living in completely different cities. They may at the bad of not getting together at any point. And the main character, Cassandra, is taking care of all her sisters and her mom. Her husband has made clear that he's not going to help her manage the state or anything. But there is something that she cannot do alone and it's the fact that her sister wants to have a sister. So he has to go to London to go meet her grandmother to take her sister. Technically, she cannot go to London because that's the part she has with her husband. But her husband usually lives, I think, in Liverpool. So she's like, you know what? It's only a week. Hopefully he's not there and it's going to be all right. But they actually arrive in the same party. She doesn't realize she's talking with her husband. Her husband doesn't recognize her either. And they just start arguing about something and everyone is like, do you realize that you are actually married, right? It was a great start of the book and basically you see them bantering the whole day because they are now both in London and the husband actually realizes that she wants to have a family so they are going to be trying to get her pregnant and this doesn't seem like much but it just gave me all the feeling. There is actually a plot device that happens in the middle of the book. I, while I was reading it I was like this is obviously done for the dramatics like there is no way this was going to happen the way it happened here. I'm so angry I'm not even sad about it because this is clearly the author's hand and while I was saying all this to myself trying to convince myself this was just fiction I was crying I read the entire scene crying because I was seeing them I was hurting me so much so after that I cannot really be angry about it because the plot device worked for me and it broke my heart and I loved it the best sequel you've read so far in 2024 this is easy I haven't read many sequels and my favorite one is Memories of Ice by Estevic Erison. This is the third book in my last book of The Fallen. There were parts of this book that I didn't love because I was either confused or I was bored because it's a military fantasy. And I don't think military fantasy is 100% my genre, but this series has so many things outside military fantasy. It has so many characters that I love. There are so many good things that keep playing on your head when you think about this series. I just love how epic and big and complex complex and realistic it is. New release you haven't read yet but you want to. For this one I have a lot of damn May books. If I have to choose only two, Kate's File Compendium and Era number five. I actually pre-ordered both of these books and I didn't get any of them because the delivery date was delayed. For one of them they didn't even give me another delivery date so I just cancelled the order and for the other one I think they gave me from July to December. Now that they are already been released hopefully it's easy easier to find them in another website that actually is going to deliver them to me because especially error number five I think my reading year will have been so much better with that booking it most anticipated release for the second half of the year for this one I don't actually have one big every single release I know of I'm really excited about are sequels or sequels I haven't read yet the biggest disappointment of this year I didn't have a lot of books especially sapphic romances but the big I actually finished and didn't like it was at the May book. I wasn't expecting it to be a five star book but I was hoping it wasn't going to be a one star. I really like going blind on books and with the May books I feel like I never know if I'm going to like it or not until I've tried them but in this case it backfired. It deals with a relationship between a 14 year old and the love interest is his godfather. They haven't done anything yet. His godfather sees him like a son and I'm pretty sure nothing is going to happen until the 14 year old kid is not a kid anymore. I struggle so much to finish this book. I know a lot of you love this book, love this author, but it was just not for me. Biggest surprise of the year. The biggest surprise is actually by the same author as my biggest disappointment and this author is Priest. A friend actually got this book for me because I was in love with this cover because it's so sexy. I think there is so much chemistry going on, but I was highly doubting I was going to see that chemistry on page and boy was I grow. I love this book. I I laughed so much. I had such a great time reading it. It's not my favorite writing style. There is a lot of information 
going on. Other than that, I have such a great time reading this book. My other big surprise was a book that made me realize I was picking the wrong books or that I should read other genres and not just romance and fantasy, which basically saved my reading year. The book is too is a pattern and it's not really a sapphic romance, but I picked it up because I was looking for a contemporary sapphic romance that I could love and I was so tired of the nothing books that I picked this up at random. This is actually a suspense historical fiction, but it does have some sapphic romance on it. We're following an ex-CIA agent, Annie, who is 27 years old. Her last mission went wrong and she's extremely traumatized and she's going back to college. But the agency wants her back because she's extremely good at what she does. They start to bully her and to threaten her into going back, which was so scary to follow. My favorite new author, it has to be Laura Ligarki. The first book I read by her was Guilty Pleasures. I really enjoy it and then I read and then he kissed her, which is one of my favorite books this year. I also read a few other books by her this year because I become obsessed. New Guest Fictional Crush, it has to be Yang Wuxi from Thousand Atom. Look at him, it's this villain here. I watched Don Ho last year, I have a huge crush on him. He has this villain as energy, he's extremely selfish, he doesn't have any kind of morals. I don't have a crush on him like I want to date him, but I do have a crush on him like he's so cool. New Guest's favorite character, I have to be honest with you, I usually have such a hard time finding only one favorite character and this time I had such a hard time finding one favorite character. I don't really have one character that stands out from the rest. If I had to choose one, maybe Henry Rios in Ledger Sleeping Head. This is a series about a detective, Henry Rios, who is a criminal defense lawyer, and I really like his morals. He basically thinks that everyone deserves to have a good defense. It's really funny for me because this must be the first time where I don't put a really great character on this list. The next two questions are a book that made you cry and a book that made you happy. I have to be honest with you, the books that made me the happiest and made me cry the hardest out of my three favorite books of the year. Another book that made me cry was Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which is a Japanese novel about a coffee shop where you can travel in time. It was really interesting, you're kind of following different people, so you have like a short story. Most beautiful book you've bought or received so far this year, and for this one I will have to say like every single year, all my dame books are amazing, they are so so pretty, they always put the most wonderful editions. If I had to choose one, I mean, has to be Guardian. Besides that, May, the other beautiful book I have was also a gift and is The Goodbye Cat. This is another Japanese novel. I love that you have a cat that is kind of in watercolor. There is actually texture going on and the paper filling of this book. It doesn't have picture in the middle of the book the way the May book have. It actually has pictures inside. I didn't realize until now. Look at these cards. I really think publishers should start putting more pictures on their books because they are just so cute. Last question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I probably have over 100 books I want to read as every other reader, but I decided to choose only one per genre. For fantasy, I really want to keep reading Malassan. The next book I have to read is book 5, which is Midnight Tides. For the May, there are so many books I want to read. If I had to choose only one, probably Arha, because I have read any Arha pick this year so far. If you don't know, The Husky and His White Cat Season is my favorite ongoing fantasy dame series. For mystery, I have Millennium Number 3, which I'm currently reading, so not so long to finish this one. For classics, I want to read one. I have Jane Eyre, so those are the four books I hope I read by the end of the year. That's it for this mid-year freakout tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, you can leave a like, you can subscribe, let me know in the comments, which are the books you have loved the most so far this year because I really want to read the racks. Also, which books you are the most looking forward to read, especially if there are new releases. I'm so bad at keeping up with the new releases, so hopefully you can remind me of some books I missed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in another video.